Hey, it's Johnny J, and this is my 39 travel questions. And today we have Kathy McCabe, the host of Dream of Italy on PBS. Kathy, welcome to my show. Thanks, Johnny. I can't wait. <laughs> so, how are you doing? I'm okay. It's been a, a rough couple of months, right, with everything we're going through, and but I'm ready to get back out there again. Yeah, today's May 21st. You are in Denver, Colorado, where you live? I am. And where'd you grow up? In Springfield, New Jersey. And how are you doing with the whole quarantine? So, I mean, your big thing is Italy. So how many times do you normally go to Italy a year? And A couple, at least two or three times a year. And I think I would have, um, I would, you know, Italy is my great escape. And um, sadly, my dad passed away in December and my mom passed away about 18 months before that. I probably would have run off to Italy by now, this spring. Um, and I'm so it sorry, feels really weird you. that I can't. So, but I, I'm looking forward to trying to get back there this summer, maybe. You know, it depends on when things open up. Right, wow. I, I, I'm sorry about your parents. Not, not to, you know, That's not awful. To, I guess, you know what I'm also, it's like, well, we had the pandemic, but that was my own little Armageddon. So yeah. I'm actually doing okay because I, you know, those things were harder almost. Right. Um, so, but I think it's strange for people, you know, when we're home and uh, we have too much time to think, right? And for those of us that love to travel, travel is our escape, you know, getting on that plane, planning the next trip, it, it stops you from, from having to face everything. So this may have been a good thing for me to really grieve and really, you know, take a look at things, but I still want to escape. <laughs> I, I'm with you. So, yeah. Um, did you go to college? I did. I went to Georgetown. And well, good for you. And what did you study? <laughs> Those parents were proud of me. <laughs> Hoya Saxa. Yeah. Uh, what'd you study? I actually have a very rare degree. It's the only, uh, I have a Bachelor of Science in Foreign Service, a BSFS. Um, in uh, European studies. So it's like, it, it's like a diplomacy school or a school for the diplomatic service. And so that, that was my, my major. So did you do a study abroad in Italy? I mean, how, why'd you fall in love with Italy? This is so funny. France was my first love. So I spent two summers in France. I did like a study abroad between freshman and sophomore years. And then I worked in an embassy uh, in, in Paris between junior and senior year. And to get this degree, you had to, to um, uh, graduate with a proficiency in a language. So obviously I was going to France and I did French. And I loved France. And then after graduation, my mother and I went on a trip to Italy, our first one. Um, and I fell in love with Italy. And I've gone back to France, but it never has been the same. <laughs> and do you have any Italian blood in you? I do. I'm half. Oh, you my are. mother's, um, yeah, my mother's um, grandparents were all from Campania. Um, and actually one of the episodes of the PBS series, um, when my, my parents were alive, obviously, <laughs> we, uh, which was great, we went and filmed in my mother's ancestral hometown. And I was made not that? a... It's called Casa Vettere Sul Calore. It's a little town in Avellino, the mountains outside of Naples. And it was phenomenal. I was made an honorary citizen. Wow. We walked in a procession for the Madonna. Um, I discovered some long lost relatives. Uh, it, was, it was really a gift. That's awesome. Well, yeah. My, um, my grandparents were from Campania too. That's what I was thinking. Are they? Are you from? Are your family from Ischia? Or am I imagining yes. that? Ischia, Ischia is amazing. It's oh, one of Bella. it's one of the islands near Capri and Procida. But it is that's the real Italian experience. I'm very fortunate. Yes. Um, so, what will it take you to fly again? By the way. Well, you know, I had the antibody test the other day, but uh, I had the finger prick one. Um, Did you get the results? Yeah, there was like a 10 minute thing and I was negative and I was so disappointed. <laughs> um, and I feel like if it had been positive, I would be more likely to, even though we don't know, um, it would have meant I lived through it one time pretty easily. 
you know what it's going to take for me now i don't have kids i don't you know i'm a little more of a risk taker than maybe other people i think i'm just going to have to get really sick of being home <laughs> and you know i i, I think if the world can kind of if it can kind of even out i'd be willing to take some risk to go all right well i, I but i don't know how much yet <laughs> we'll find out um any idea how many countries you've been to that's a good one. You know, I've gone to Italy 50 times, more than 50 times. Um, so I really don't know, 15 or 20. But so all of Europe or have you been outside of Europe? Um, I've never been to Asia. Um, it's mostly Europe. Okay. Mostly Europe. I'm a Europe girl, but I'm, re I'm ready to expand. I want to go to Fiji and Tahiti and islands. Uh, you need to go right? to all those for sure. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a little different than some of your guests because they're going all, all over. I'm a repeat visitor to one place. Gotcha. Mostly. How about what's your earliest travel memory? Um, this is really funny because I actually watched one of your videos where you asked these questions I'm and I have change them two. Up. What? I said, I'm going to change up the questions now. I cheated. I know. Uh, but okay. it was a lovely, lovely memory. So when I was like eight, nine, or 10, or a couple of years in there, my parents thought it would be, you know, they were wonderful parents. And we, I was the only child and we would go to Disney World in May and we would go on Eastern Airlines. And I have this memory because my father would dress in a suit. And I have this memory, it's gonna make me cry. I have this memory of him in a suit and he would bring his briefcase. You know, people used to dress to fly. And I remember the stairs, you know, the stairs to the plane. And so going to Disney World, those first few years, it was, you know, we might have started when I was six. That's my first memory. Real, like, real travel memory. Right. And then when I was 10, the, one of the coolest memories is my parents decided this People Express started up. And my parents were like, okay, let's go to London. And it was a, you know, a big trip. And it was made affordable by, pe by this new low-budget carrier. And that you know, sparked my love of Europe. So, and, and travel, a real travel. Well, I've been on both of those airlines. And um, yeah. although I, I, I didn't go to Europe till I was 26 years old, I think. Yeah, yeah, so. it's, such an, it's such an amazing experience that first trip to Europe. So what's your favorite American city? You know, I want, I want to say Denver. I really love it here. Um, I moved here about 10 years ago, but then my, you know, my parents and other things kind of took me back and forth for a number of years or mostly on the East coast, but I really wanted to come back and there's not like a huge, you know, I can do my work anywhere. You know, there wasn't, um, I don't have family here, but I just love it here. Well, yeah. How about international? Oh, besides God. Rome. <laughs> I, you know what, I have to, you know, I have to revisit this first love of mine. So Paris, okay. Paris. I'd like to go back. All right. And yeah. where do you think the friendliest people in the world are? Well, you know where they are. They're in, they're in Italy. They're um, particularly Southern Italy, as you know, they would give you the clothes off their backs. Right. Um, they are amazing people. Now in their own families, they are crazy and may not treat each other that well, but <laughs> You know what I mean? I mean, I Italians are awesome and crazy, but <laughs> true. they are friendly and they are, you know, you'll walk into a town. I mean, that's what happened to my mother and I. We showed up in my ancestral hometown and two blonde women were, my mother's family were actually Norman invaders. My mother was blonde. And, you know, we just showed up in this town a hundred years later and literally everyone took us in. And my mom said it was like Brigadoon. You know, the town came alive. And, and that still happens all the time in Italy. And there's such a sense of connection. And I think that's why I would take this risk to go back soon, is I'm just hungering for that, that connection. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. How about, where do you think are the meanest immigration officers? Where have I had? That's a good, you know. Maybe you've never had a bad experience. I don't think I've had, you know, or I've, I've suppressed it somewhere where and you know it's really interesting in France they can sometimes not be that nice you know um another you want to hear the other friendliest place I've ever been is Normandy 
I mean, they remember the Americans, <laughs> what they did. Um, so it's funny, you could say, oh, sometimes people in a certain country, but there's parts of the country. I mean, I particularly remember their warmth. So I haven't had, you know, really bad experience that I can remember. Okay. How about any place you have no desire to go to? No, I'm curious. I, I would go o almost anywhere. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'd like to expand my repertoire, you know, out of Italy. And yeah. what's your drink of choice when you're in Italy or in the air? In Italy, it's a Negroni. <laughs> okay. Which gets the job done. <laughs> our spritz. Um, and then I just love, I'm, usually if I'm on a plane, I'll drink wine. Okay. Yeah. Good for you. Usually How getting ready for the trip, right? Yeah. Or gin and tonic in the airport. <laughs> Yeah. How how about a favorite restaurant in the world? Oh man, you would have thought if I'd watched this before, I would have prepared. <laughs> you know, this there's a restaurant in Florence I love, and my mom loved, and we would go to all the time. And I actually filmed there. It's called Giovanni, in um, I like the name. Uh, in uh, Osteria del Giovanni um, in, in Florence. And I just have so many memories there and we filmed a cooking class with him and I like going back there. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's the craziest thing you've ever eaten? Well, the craziest thing I was supposed to eat but didn't work out. Um, so we did an episode in Abruzzo and they have this cheese that uh, I forget how exactly it works. They put in a certain place and it, the maggots go into the cheese. Say no more. But I didn't, here's the thing. We're ready to film, right? We're ready to film. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take one for the team. I'm ready. And she cut it open. No maggots. We didn't, we never used it. I guess when I had eel, eel was really weird for me in Venice. We did a cooking segment and they were alive till they, and I'm not a big seafood person, but Neither they were mine. very good. They were very good. They taste like butter. Wow. Yeah. So that was weird. I was kind of screaming a little. I mean, that was good for the camera, but I really, they were terrifying, these things moving around. Them. Yeah. I, I used to catch them when I was little. Yeah. 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 Um, how about what's your favorite hotel in the world? Uh, I have an answer for that. It's called Monastero Santa Rosa, and it's on the Amalfi Coast. Um, a friend of mine owns it, um, or we became friends because I went there, and it just, it looks like you're on this perch looking out over heaven. Um, it's an American woman and her family. She was on a vacation. She looked up. She saw this ruined monastery. She decided to turn it into a hotel. It is exquisite. You know, it's five-star all the way, but it is just, um, it's paradise, so definitely uh my favorite i'm gonna have to add it to my list yes yes um how about do you have a favorite travel credit card you know i might need some help because i'm not sure i have the best <laughs> well i have a platinum american express it does some things for me right but yep. i you know and i get the points but i i think there's a lot you know and this is your specialty of course there's a lot of other possibilities out there, but yeah. they've done well for me. And you know, I rented a car once and had a little, a little scrape, more than a little scrape, and they totally, you know, hundred percent took care of. It was like a thousand dollars taken taken care of. So and was that in the U.S. or was that in Italy? It was actually in the U.S. Yeah. Okay. So you know, it's come in handy. But the other thing is, I need to really in read. I don't know if I do all the thing, take advantage of all the things that it actually offers. Well, yeah. you know, after this interview, why don't you just browse johnnyjet.com? I will, but what do you think? I don't know. I know you all like this Chase Sapphire thing. No, right? I like, I, I listen, I, I have them all. Uh, not do? all, but I have, I have Chase Sapphire. Okay. Reserve, I have a Platinum American Express. I have the City. I have Barclay card, Barclays. I have, I, I, I got a lot. Okay. All, all for right. different reasons. But we don't have time for that. This is all about no. you, not me. So what's your favorite island besides it? And now, actually, not besides, hopefully it's Ischia. Oh, of course it's Ischia. No, Ischia is magical. Or I could say, you know, I did a great trip to Iceland um, for something really different. I wanted to go somewhere different from Italy. Like I wanted to go on a vacation. 
And my God, and I went in 2007, so it's obviously become way, way more popular, but it is fascinating. It is. You know, the most literate country, um, the, it, the, all the genetics, they do a lot of genetics because it was, you know, the more pure, um, uh, the most, um, it looks like the moon, they did, they practiced for the moon landing, and it's just, it's such a surprise. Yeah, no, I, I, I've been to Iceland a couple of times. I love it. Yeah. I'm surprised in Iceland you didn't eat shark or, or puffin or foal. I think I like, I think I wimped out. I have to be more adventurous. I think I wimped out on those. Things. Okay. Your favorite beach? Oh my God. You know what came into my head? And it's just because I love the Jersey Shore Spring Lake. <laughs> okay. You know, more for memories. Um, Otherwise, I'd probably pick one in Italy. Jersey Shore has beautiful beaches. We used to go growing up. Absolutely has beautiful beaches, completely. Yeah. This time of year? Jersey is, Jersey's got a lot going for it. They do. They just have a bad rap for some reason. <laughs> um, favorite travel movie? Can I guess your favorite travel movie? You can guess. I'm trying to think of the You're exact say Under the Tuscan Sun. No, actually not. I mean, I love, um, I'm a purist and I love Under the Tuscan Sun in the book and I know Frances and I film with her and it's a cute movie, but I'm like, you know, Ed, her husband, isn't her husband in the movie and till the end and I'm a purist. Um, the one I love, cause we're talking about Amalfi Coast is a talented Mr. Ripley, um, you know, with Gwyneth Paltrow and they, they're, they're um, on the boat between the islands and beautiful scenery. Yeah. Um, between, it was with Matt Damon. Yes, Matt Damon. That's right. Do I look, I think my battery, do we, uh, do you edit this? Or? <laughs> no, I do, I do not edit it. So whatever you say <laughs> is going on. Like, okay. Is it, but I look okay, right? I was worried my battery's running out. No, no, computer. you're looking great. Uh, All right, let me know if it starts failing all right I, i'll go quickly we have like six more questions uh favorite travel okay. show besides your own travel um uh you know my friend Mika Ugh, there's so many but michaela malazzi i think you know her yep. she does the barefoot adventures bare feet adventures she does the dance show and the reason I love that is that woman has such, I thought I had energy and I thought I had drive and she just made that show happen. And it's dancing all over the world and how it brings us together. So I just, I love that. Love that idea. Well, you're, you're the, my second guest to say her, to name her. And uh, she's actually going to really? be on my show in a few days. Uh, you know why? She's also like such, she's just a very kind soul. She and is that makes a big 100%. Difference. Yeah. And we're from two towns away from each other. Oh yeah. Where yeah. We grew up. Um, how about favorite travel book? Now that might be under the Tuscan sun or I re I remember I read it as soon as it came out. It might've been after my first or second trip to Italy. Okay. Um, and definitely I think Francis and under the Tuscan sun and Peter Mayle and his book in France, they really had this new dream or this modern dream of when you can move to another country and, become part of the, the society. And I think that the, uh, they were quite trendsetters with that. Gotcha. And how about, who are your favorite travel bloggers or newsletters that you sign up besides, you know, Johnny Maggie, Jet? Hela. Johnny, I've known you a long time. Um, you know, I Oh, I think I love, I'm here. not like as points oriented as I should be. Um, you know what I, I really enjoy, but it's inside baseball is Skift. You know, all the, I love the business of travel. I think it's fascinating. Yep. And even if you're just sort of a consumer and interested in travel, he, he they do an, a, a phenomenal job. So I, I read them every day. They do. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How about what's your worst travel moment? It's not the worst, but I just had a memory of my mom you know, we're walking through Rome Airport on one of our trips and, you know, start to smell some wine. And this was back when you could put wine in your carry-on. And I think she had a pulley, a, she totally busted open a bottle of wine and it was on everything. 
I'm sure I've had worse moments, but I just remember that one. I actually made that mistake once before. I remember now. I brought yeah. back a bottle of wine from, from Europe and I opened up my suitcase and boom. The good old days when you could, yeah. yeah. Or that was, this was carry on, but yeah. It's, okay, this, this was not. This is a check don't, bag. Don't put it. I, I've kind of grown, well, I've risked it once in a while. I try not to even send, even put it in my luggage. Not, not worth right. it. Um, what's your what's your dream destination? As I said, I really want to go to the South Pacific. Yeah, okay. like Tahiti or yeah. And what's the most important thing travel has taught you? Oh, you know, I don't know. I mean, this is a did I lose you? Big one. Um, I think that there's always something to look forward to, actually. There's always something new and there's always beauty and art in the world. And even when there's a pandemic, even when things look so rough, you know, there's so much to look forward to. And your best travel tip period and your best travel tip for Italy. Do I? Oh, geez. I don't even, I'm so not prepared. Best travel tip. I don't know. Well, um, while you're thinking of that, by the way, where can people find you? Oh, Dream of Italy. So dreamofitaly.com. We have the TV show, the podcast, the um, the newsletter I started with, which we still publish. Um, Dream of Italy on Instagram and all the social media. Um, I don't know. My best travel tip is to, to travel. You know, maybe I'm in this frame of mind. Travel with your family, if you like them. Travel with your parents. Travel with your siblings, your kids, because... That's, you know, when I think about my parents and miss them, I, I think about the travel memories. Um, and, you know, I got, when I did that episode, to tape them and have video of them. But, you know, I love all these new services like Flightographer where you can get photos. And there are so many ways now you can preserve your trip, like with an iPhone. And I think that's a good trip. For Italy, um, you know, the, I don't think this is revolutionary. It's off the top of my head. Well, um, the locals, you know, always ask a local and Francis and I talked about this. So Francis says you should go to into the Enoteca, which is the wine store. And that's where you should ask people, where should I go to dinner? You should ask your cab driver. You should even go get your hair cut if, or, or done and ask those people, the locals, where to go. And a lot of people speak English now. It's not as hard as it was, but leave some time so that when you ask the locals, you have time to go do the things they recommend. But that's who, those are the people in the town you should ask. That's a, that's a good tip. I like good. it. All right. Well, Kathy, thank you so much for taking the time today. And everyone, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and we're going to have more. So I can't wait. Thank you. You have good guests. Good guests. <laughs> I try. Rudy, I love Rudy. You had Rudy on too. Rudy's a great guy. He's good. All right, Kathy. Ciao.